Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Spring 21 pre-release enhancements and um, at the time of recording this video we don't have the release notes out yet uh, but I was able to play around in an org and just to look into what the flow enhancements are going to come up uh, with Spring 21. So I'm going to share a few of my favorite flow features as enhancements and they are super, um, super powerful features and I highly recommend trying them out if you have access to a release org or maybe start planning uh, for how you can utilize these enhancements that are coming up soon. Okay, so let's get started. The first one that I want to talk about is the record variable, prior record variable. Um, let me find that flow. Okay, so <clears throat> um, one of the biggest gap between process builder and the flows were that we are not able to use the prior value uh, formula but now you can with spring 21 so what that lets you do is for example you want to fire something only when something changes and let's say prior value is different from the new value only then you want to fire an automation you don't want to fire an automation on every every single time somebody edits that record when the criteria meets so let's say in my case i want to fire um this whole process and update some other fields on that value on that record or maybe you are sending an email to someone you obviously don't want to send an email multiple times just because the re record was edited so in my case it's the country changing so basically anytime the country changes on the account I want to populate a region field and it's, it's cheaper or safer for the system to not unnecessarily run automations if it's not needed so um, how how can we do that is by comparing the variable comparing the new value to the old value so if I change it to UK the region field will change here to EMEA and that's using a custom metadata table which I can make another video on but uh, for now that's only firing when that changes and let's look at how we do that in flow it's really simple um, Everything remains the same. It's a record trigger flow. You have the decision here. So basically, when you have record dot billing country, um, all you need to do is does not equal to when you start typing record, you'll see another new thing called record prior dot billing country. So um, another use case for this would be, and this is a lot. Um, this requirement comes up a lot. Is you want to stamp that old value onto a different field, and we'd have to use trigger for that or something like that. So let's say a stage changes for the opportunity and before uh, they would want to stamp that old value and when it changed. So that kind of scenario, maybe you can try using record prior in that scenario as well. So just to capture the old value into a field. And a lot of time that comes up because people want to report on it. And that's just really an easy way to do that rather than having a history related record and going into that and trying to figure that out. It's a lot easier sometimes to just have that stamped, just the prior value. So that would be one of the use cases you can use this fe uh, feature for, uh, very powerful. Um, another one I wanna share is on al along the lines of uh, screen flow. So let's look at that. So I have a screen flow here. Just a very simple, just few fields here. Um, and now if you actually look at the input components, you will see uh, display section beta. So what that lets you do is, just to show you here, you can now put different columns. So basically until now you were just stuck with this one single column, uh, one column thing, uh, right? So if you wanted to add email, phone, so security and date of birth in this kind of rows, you were not able to do that, but now you can just add column and it will, it is smart enough to dynamically divide them equally. So divide is, divides 12 by two. If you add one more, divides 12 by three. So it's four of size. So that's standard CSS functionality and maximum you can add is four. So that does save a lot of real estate. You don't have to write gigantic flows with one, uh, each row separately. So just to show you a comparison, uh, I had this old flow where I have phone and email in this single line where it's not really needed because they're not so long. And now you can actually do this, which looks really good um, and also saves a lot of real estate um, on your screen. Okay, so that's super cool. And if you have big flows, uh, large flows to capture information, definitely something worth in looking into to kind of uh, simplify that. Another one uh, is also around auto-launched flows, 
which is record triggered flow. So let's say um, you want to, and this is similar to what you do today in process uh, and add schedule actions. So anytime a record is created or whatever requirement that might be, you want to send a reminder email after three days, six days, whatever time, or you want to um, send a task, create a task or whatever your requirement is. So this is one of the features that was missing in the flow, but now you can. So once you have the record triggered flow, you will see this schedule path section. You can delete path, so I've deleted few. Let's just show you here. So there's a runs immediately, which is by default, and you can add schedule path. So I want to send reminder and time um, source when account is created. Maybe I want to send three days after the account is created. Hit done. And now you have two scheduled paths, so two paths here, right? And how that works is very similar to the decision. So if you start connecting them together, you'll see this pop up. So this runs immediately and whatever name you assigned it to. So if I wanted to send a reminder, I could do that. And obviously, add an action to send that reminder. You can add an email action, email alert, or simple simple email. Okay, so that was another one. Um, really exciting feature as well. You can maybe start thinking about moving some of your processes into the flow because flows are definitely a lot faster than the process. And um, a lot of enhancements are also coming into flow. Okay, uh, the next one is, which is something I really haven't figured out how it works, but I wanted to share if you, in case if you have figured that out, feel free to comment on this one. Um, so now you have this new option when you go to email action and you select the core action called send email, and that comes from um, action. So if you are in action, you'll select type, go to core action, and start typing send email. So this one. Now you have this new option called rich text formatted body. And if you remember, uh, if you have used email action from here, uh, it's not directly possible to send a formatted text. It will look really weird. Um, and I got an email that looks something like this. So that's not what we want. We don't want it. We actually want it to be formatted properly. Um, so I think the idea is that this enhancement will help with that without having to use a managed package or or some sort of lightning component to send that. But um, it didn't work for me yet, so I'm hoping I'll go through the release notes and see what, what's going on. Um, but I wanted to share in case some of you have um, tried this out. Okay, um, that's all from me. And please let me know if you have found any other flow features or any features, and I'm probably gonna make another video on them when the release notes are out as well. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful.